You know, February is Black History Month, and while we celebrate the lives of those who have made history in the past, this month we're going to introduce you to African Americans who are making history now in our Central Florida area by helping change the lives of others. That's right, Ken. And our guest today, Simone Darden, has journeyed through life's dark valleys and found that God was there the whole time, speaking words of encouragement and restoration. Simone is now using her story to uplift and help other women who have experienced the same struggles and valleys. And she has written a book that you're going to want to read. It's called Lily in the Valley. Welcome, Simone. Welcome, Simone. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Tell us a little bit about yourself first. Where were you raised? And, uh... I am originally from Brooklyn, New York. Um, I've lived in Florida now 12 years. 12 years and I'm still getting used to Florida. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It takes some getting used to. You never know if you're going to wake up to 80 degree weather or 40 degree weather. Yeah, it's exactly. Just, it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. well, we're glad you made the transition yes. and we're glad that you're here. Tell us a little bit about your story. You talk about being, you are, I guess, the lily in the valley. How did God restore you when you were down in the depths of the valley? At the time, I didn't even know that, that I was even in a valley. Um, when it all took place, I was on the verge. I had took, I've taken some, um, some pills, mm. and it was just, I just had it. So much had hit me all at once. I was about to be homeless, no place to live, and I, I was, you know, couldn't take it anymore, and I took all these pills. And um, in a dream, I, I wrote a letter beforehand, and um, in a dream, God had told me, he showed up then, and the book cover is actually my dream, and he showed up in the middle there. And um, he says, Simone, what are you doing? You can't die mm -hmm. in your valley. Mm. Um, do you see, you see where you're standing? And I say, yes, I do. And he said, look down there. And there was this big light, which is the light at the, at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. And um, I looked, and he said, you don't have that far to go. You, there's much that I require of you. You cannot die. Mm -hmm. That was 945. I woke up at 345, just praising God, thanking God that, you know, I made it. I didn't mm -hmm. die. And otherwise, I would have been, you know, in hell and not... That's right. You know, walking out what God intended me to. Mm. You know, Simone, there's so many people today, and we read about them in the newspaper, or see them on news reports, and, uh, you know, I'm thinking about Kaylee Anthony's grandfather that just yeah. got to a point where, you know, physically, emotionally, even spiritually, people break. Even mm -hmm. Christians right. mm -hmm. sometimes will sure. give up. Yeah. And, uh, and let's face it, we've all probably we've all thought been, about yeah. it at one point or another. But God wants us to live here and live for Him and live abundantly. That's right. And that's part of your, your message in your book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell, tell us more about what, after you woke up, what you were sensing. Oh, God, I was so grateful. And he began to, he had already been speaking to me. So the book includes a lot of journal writing from his word. You know, they were his words. And he kept speaking to me about restoration. And he let, all I had to do was just trust him. Trust that what I was hearing was him. Not pay attention and focus on what's around us, because so many times we get caught up on our, our situations and it just overtakes us to where we can't, we take our eyes off of God and what he has for us. And I had to, he was everything, you know, he stripped everything from me, but he was there. Mm -hmm. And I held on to him for dear life. Right. He was everything to me. I, I, I don't know. I would not have made it had it not been him. Well, the Bible tells us, I will never leave you That's right. nor forsake you. Mm -hmm. What, this is getting real personal now, what got you into your valley and what was so bad about your life? What got me into my valley was fornication. Um, you know, we think we are supposed to be like this world. You know, yeah. it's okay. God is moving with the times, but he, that's that's the lie of the, from the devil. And I lived a life with my my boyfriend at the time. I was living with him for about six years, and we bought a house and played marriage, and then um, we got married. So I figured, okay, God, I, I did it right. Mm -hmm. I made it. You know, I fixed it. No, we have to. There's consequences for our actions. And I opened up doors and just let the devil sit at my kitchen table and just, you know, sup. Yeah. <laughs> and um, all hell broke loose a year after the marriage. My husband at the time had uh, lost his job and we were about to lose our house and all things just, you know, was transpiring that was out of, I, I felt was out of my control. And um, God began to speak at that moment. My writings changed from my words to his. Mm. And um, my husband, 
I found out I sold the house, moved out in spite of what God had told me to do, moved into an apartment, and I found out at that time that my husband was ha was was having an affair, was you know committing adultery, and everything snapped. Everything after that just went spiraling out of control, and I couldn't I couldn't function. It was it just it was a blow that I didn't expect. It came out of nowhere because I thought you know our and even when it happened I thought our marriage was worth saving that this was gonna pass surely you know he's coming back because God kept saying restoration I can fix this I can mend your shattered pieces and so that's what I thought it didn't work out that way but but he did mend the shattered pieces he did he did me and, and you, me exactly but, but not the marriage I know that we probably have a lot of viewers listening today who can relate to your exactly. story Simone and there's domestic violence out there mm -hmm. but there's emotional um, abuse that's going on as well and your story has more to do with the emotional trauma of right. living with someone who did not love you as Christ loves the church exactly. and tell us um, kind of make a distinction between, and maybe there's not a huge distinction between physical violence and emotional abuse. Tell it, us what there your thoughts is. are. I think that, you know, abuse of any kind, work, because it's, 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 in, it's entering into your soul, your spirit, mm -hmm. and that, you know, that's a seed that's going to birth out, and eventually it takes its toll, and, you know, mm -hmm. those trees have roots, then they mm -hmm. dig deep, but um, it's, we have to know that everything is in our Father. Well, as you follow this journey, then, and you, you talk about this in your book, you've offered uh, your services now to women that are in prisons, mm -hmm. uh, in Lowell, and North yeah. of Ocala, or South of Ocala, uh, but also um, right here in Central Florida at various prisons, you're going in now with your church. And mm -hmm. are, are you sensing the same thing with women? Yes, I, I am. It's because it's, it's, it's all over. Everyone's this, everyone is hurting. Everyone is going through some type of valley. They, ju they just don't have a name to it. They don't know what it is, and they don't know how to get out. And my hope is to teach them, tell them how to get out through my testimony and sharing what God shared with me. Mm -hmm. So that's what your book is about. It relates your story. You tell uh, about your story, but you also give your readers hope and encouragement and ways to get out of the valley. Exactly, because I don't want people to think that it's just a book about marriage and what I went through in my marriage, but about the lessons that God showed me through my valleys. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite chapters in the, in the um, book is Daddy's Little Girl, and it talks about a father's love. When a daughter or a son does not know um, when their father isn't present or if they are, you, you know, and that father does not know their identity, mm -hmm. we as the children don't know who we are. And we look to the world to find who we are, how to love, how to raise our kids, how to maintain a relationship, when that's all in the father. We have to go back to the creator. Mm -hmm. This is a historical time in our country with a, a new president who's yeah. African American <laughs> and and you know we pray for him every day and we encourage right. you to pray for Absolutely. our president every day it's not an easy job it's the most difficult job probably now mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. most difficult time in our history mm -hmm. but you know it, it's interesting as we talk about um, black history month there have been so many martin luther king and many of these leaders came out of the church mm -hmm. out of faith and i sense in talking with you that's where your faith comes from is from jesus christ mm -hmm to help you lift you up but also to tell people there is hope there is uh, even in our country there's a there's a reason for hope and our hope is in Jesus Christ that's why we have this buffer service says in God we trust right. mm -hmm. God Jesus is our hope mm -hmm. and that's what you get share in your book too yes yes it's a lot of hope a lot of restoration is spoken there because you know just because he didn't restore my marriage he restored me in a way that I, you know, had I not gone through that, I would not be where I am today. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for that. And that's what I want, not just women, because I know that the book is, is a, a, written by a woman, a woman, but it's for men, it's for women, saved, unsaved. You know, every, like I said, everyone has their pits and their valleys. Yeah. Yes. You know, you mentioned earlier that you were not a Christian when you wrote your suicide note and you almost I was a Christian. You were a Christian. I was. That's a scary thing, isn't it's it? It's a scary thing. Because I was going to ask you when you actually came to know the Lord. I knew, I, I grew up in the church since mm. I was two years old. Mm. I always maintained a relationship with God, but you know, as we get older, you know, we get caught up in life, the worldly things, and God is there, but He's a distant. Mm -hmm. And, you know, He has to draw you back in through the storms of life to say, you know, hey, 
I'm still here. This is what I have for you. You're off on the wrong track. I need you here and not there. You know, that makes, to me, Simone, that makes your message even stronger because a lot of people think, okay, once I become a Christian, then everything's going to be great and I'll just, you know, live my life and life's going to be great. It does not happen that way. It's, it's all tough. about lordship mm -hmm. and making Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. That is a moment by moment kind of an existence. It, is. it takes a lot of discipline, it takes a lot of courage and boldness. It's just not an easy life. So here you are a Christian, and yet you're living in the depths of the valley. Can you relate? You know, mm -hmm. can you viewers relate to that? Because I think we can all relate mm -hmm. to that. How do we? How we get there is all kinds of different paths. What we do to get out of the valley is up to us. Tell us some tangible things that Lily in the Valley gives us. Some real good, strong points, ways that we can get out of the valley. Your choices. Your choices are everything, and that's one of the titles, one of the chapters in there, your choices. Because you get there by your choices. True. You know, and how you get out is by your choices. You either, you either choose to get out or stay and die in your valley. Because you mentioned living in fornication. I mean, you knew that it was not right to live with your boyfriend. Mm -hmm. You knew that that was something that was wrong because you used the word fornication, and yet you made the choice and the decision to do that. And I loved how you said you had to suffer the consequences because all of us do. Right. I suffer the consequences for the sins that I've chosen mm -hmm. in my own life as well. Other things that are going to help us, Simone, what are some other things? Um, knowing your identity, your worth. Um, we have to know that the world isn't, you, you're, not, you're not who you are based upon the world, but what God says you are. You know, we look at ourselves in the mirror and sometimes we don't like what we see, but we have to understand that the enemy is a liar mm -hmm. and he lies to us. We have to ask God to show us how he sees us so we can see with his eyes. Mm -hmm. And that's, that. what he's, that's, that's what he's taught me. I that's love good. that. I think that is so rich because as women, a lot of times it is dependent upon how we feel about ourselves. If we had a great dad in the mm -hmm. home, to, which I did, praise God, I had a dad who loved me and valued mm -hmm. me. And I never had a problem with understanding God's love for me. But a lot of people do have a problem right. with that. If they don't have that relationship with a loving father in the home, they have no sense of self-worth. And mm -hmm. we need to know who we are are in Jesus Christ, that he loves us. We are his bride. I love how Beth Moore says we are the apple That's of his eye. eye. Mm -hmm. And that father in the home is so important too to give value, particularly to young girls yeah. and young boys too, right. that, that father in the home. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important to make sure that there is a male and a female in the home exactly. to make sure that those boys are nurtured as men mm -hmm. and also the, the the father has a place in the girl's life exactly. too and a very important place because that is the figure that she's probably going to be looking at as yeah. she chooses someone to marry. That is exactly right. That's what he told me. He said, um, he said, Simone, I'm your daddy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna teach you after we're done, you're gonna know what a what a what a husband is supposed to look like, act like, and walk like. Yes. Because you'll see it in me first. Mm -hmm. I'm the first example. But how do you see that unless you're in the Word? Exactly. You know, we mm -hmm. have to have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ where He becomes our buddy when we're I know you, you mentioned that you're writing more books, when you're mm -hmm. driving in your car, when you're sitting at home, when you're walking down the sidewalk, he is right there with you to talk to you and with you. Yeah. And speaking of talking to him in the car, I know you said that you're doing yeah. writing in the car. Mm -hmm. Tell us about some other books that you're getting ready to write. I am on the second book. Um, Lily in the Valley is a series. God showed me in a, in a dream. This is a series. This mm -hmm. is not going to end yet. Um, and the next one is Lily in the Valley, In and Out of My Dry Places. Mm -hmm. And it speaks about coming out of the valley, right. how to get out and stay out. Right. And stay out, that's <laughs> yeah. right. So many of us sang the song, you know, the lily of the valley, the bright and, yeah. bright and shining star. star is that it? You know. <laughs> but I also remember the song, uh, only Jesus can yeah. satisfy your soul. Mm -hmm. And no matter if you're rich, you're poor, you know, I, we've seen yes. people very wealthy mm -hmm. take the same avenue that you did mm -hmm. as Christians mm -hmm. and ended their life early because yeah. of financial difficulties. Mm -hmm. We also know many of you out there that are, are of different face, and even though we talk about this being Black History Month, no matter what your color, what your nationality, what your race, what your sex, what your gender, what what the big question is: Do you really know Jesus Christ? Because mm -hmm. oh, only He can satisfy your soul. Only He can give you that peace right. and joy that we're talking about today. 
And again, if you were raised Catholic or mm -hmm. Muslim, whatever, you know, we've heard of wonderful stories yeah. about Muslims finding the Lord recently That's mm -hmm. and finding peace and joy. No matter what your background is, no matter what your life has been like, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is the way, the only way, yeah, right. the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. Thank you for writing this book, oh, yeah, uh, Simone, and what you're going to be doing in the future as you write other books, too. You've got a great story, great testimony, <laughs> and a great smile, by the way, too. Thank you. Uh, <laughs>